you ask if 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 someone comes and say, "Wow, this guy is a huge big big man. He just entered." You touch your neighbor. What does he do? Is he a politician? Is does he do oil? Does he do international business? Does he do Yahoo Yahoo? Does he do? Am I communicating? You will want to know what he does because for every great man, there is something he does that made him great. So I was reading the Bible to discover what Job was doing that made him the greatest of all the men in the East. I was trying to discover his business. I discovered Job had no business. I discovered there was no company. I discovered there was no factory. I also discovered he was not a politician. And I was not asking myself, what was he doing that gave him so much wealth that made him the greatest among the whole East? Anything a man does on daily basis is his occupation. Am I right? Hello? If you go to your business place every day, are you a businessman? If you're a student and you go to school every day, are you a student? Now, whatever you do on daily basis is your occupation. I discovered that the occupation of Job was eating and drinking. Yes. How did I know? The Bible said he has seven sons and three daughters. And the Bible said every day each of the sons does party in his house on daily basis and they invite their sisters to eat with them so we have seven days in the week and he has seven sons so on sunday his first son will do party on monday second son will do party on tuesday third son will do party on wednesday fourth son will do party on friday fifth son will do party on saturday the sixth son will do party and on sunday the last son will do party on monday the first son will start his own party again and that was his daily life but the irony of the matter is that the more he eats the richer he becomes am i talking to somebody here it's an irony when 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 men are extravagant they go down when men eat every day their business crumble when men do this and they spend excess money things don't go well for them but here is a man who was eating every day parrying every day and yet he was getting bigger and bigger what does he tell us it is not about labor it is about favor it is not about how well you can do it it's about God's anointing upon your life am i communicating here i came to qualify anyone who is not qualified for a greater glory i came to qualify everyone who your labor is not giving you enough fruit you have labored enough and it's as if you are not succeeding by the anointing that will come upon you today it will graduate you to your next level. Stand on your feet and shout a better aim. There was something that Job had, and that was what others didn't have, and that was the power of favor. Somebody said favor. I didn't hear you. Somebody said favor. Somebody shouted again, said favor. How can a man be batting every day and yet he was getting bigger? There was favor that was working for him, that was not working for other people. I see men that go to the market early morning by 6 a.m. and they stay till 4 p.m. and they make 120,000. Another man comes by 10 in the morning and closes by 2 and he makes 1.2 million. The difference between the both of them is not the color of their skin, neither is it the background of where they come from, but the favor content that is working in their lives. Am I communicating here? When a man receives favor, your labor is an abuse in the presence of favor. What is favor? Favor is when a man throws his hands and God goes ahead of you to do for you what you cannot do for yourself. That is what favor is. What is favor? Favor is the light of God's countenance upon a man. Favor is regulating regulation. Favor is the missing ingredient in this school of breakthrough. Favor is heavenly partiality against every acceptance. Whenever favor comes upon a man, it becomes divine likability, attractability and acceptability. Favor is the flavor that colors the labor of a man. Anytime you carry favor, you don't become stagnant. When a man is favored, his life is flavored. A man that has favor is a flavored man. What is favor? Favor is heavenly perfume that defines every bad order in life any man walking under the sun has an order if you enter an office and they reject you and another man enters and they accept you the difference between the both of you 
spirit is your smell in the realm of the spirit. Your smell was repulsive, but his own smell was attractive. I came to prophesy every wrong smell in your life, every wrong smell in your business, every wrong smell in your destiny. I change your smell by favor. I said, I change your smell by favor. I said, I change your smell by favor. I said, I change your smell by favor. Move to him and shout out amen like thunder. I said, Move to him and shout out amen like thunder. Move to him and shout out amen like thunder. Am I communicating? Look at him and say favor. I didn't hear him say favor, favor. Let me show you what favor is like. And the Bible said they get back to Moses in a time when male children were not needed in the land of Egypt. And the Bible said when the mother of Moses gave back to her him, he, she tried to hide him. And after three months, the Bible said when the mother could no longer hide him, the mother packaged him in a basket and took him to the bank of River Nile and dropped Moses by the back and said, oh boy, work out your destiny. If I keep you, I will die with you. So you better stay here. Work out. If you live, fine. If you die, die. The Bible said the sister Miriam was sitting by the side, looking at the boy, but could not help the boy. If you lack favor, you'll be surrounded by people that be looking at you, but they cannot help you. Am I communicating? There are people listening to me. Every big name is in your soul. They know you by name, but they cannot help you. You are connected, but you don't collect from your connection. Every connection should produce a collection. Every contact should produce a contract. Am I talking to somebody here? Am I communicating here? The Bible says, and the sister of Moses was there, but she could not help Moses. And the Bible said that very morning, Pharaoh's daughter woke up from sleep. She said, oh, I want to go back. She entered the jacuzzi. The jacuzzi was not working. She got to the swimming pool. It was dirty. She said, let me go use the shower. She said, no, I fixed the Brazilian with all. I could not use the shower on my head. I need to do something. Let me go to the back of River Nile and bath. And the Bible says she was coming to River Nile. She thought it was an ordinary decision. Little did she know that the favor upon a little boy was attracting her. It was not her decision. It was the favor of Moses that was attracting the woman. How did I know? The Bible says as she stepped into the water, she had the cry of the boy. And the Bible says she stepped out of the water and went for adoption. If you read that portion, she did not bath again. So as soon as she carried the boy, she said, mission accomplished. I am going back to my house. Can I prophesy to you? I said, can I prophesy to you? 21 days from now, under the God whom I must serve, I speak upon your life. Your favor shall attract kings to you. Your favor shall attract kings to you. Your favor shall attract rich people to you. Men that will favor your life shall locate you. Men that will favor your destiny shall locate you. Lift your hand and shout out amen like a believer. Watch this. Take it out. Watch this. Watch this. Let me show you what favor is. And Job increased. Even though he was eating every day, yet he was the greatest. It was a mystery. I read that portion of the Bible, it blew my mind. Lima to Kaswa Prakata. Listen, when you are when, when you have labor in your life, it does not mean that your labor cannot turn into favor. A man can start with labor and end up in favor. Let me give you an example. The mother of Jesus, Mary by name, the mother gave birth to her in pain. How many of you know the meaning of Mary? Mary means bitterness. When the mother was giving birth to her, the mother said, oh, uh, you, 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 oh, you, you made me go through a lot of pain. Therefore, everything about your life shall be bitter. The mother called her Mary. Right from when she was small, the name Mary began to affect her. How did I know? In the land of Israel, if you give birth to a little girl, you betroth her to a boy so that when they grow, they will marry. It's their custom, even till today. So when they get back to Mary and her mates, they were betrothing her mates to future governors, future presidents, future House of Assembly members. But the bitterness in her name made her to be betrothed to a future carpenter because her name was bitter. So the bitterness began to 
for long. Right from when she was small. But as she was growing, that is why I told you, how you started does not matter. In the middle of your life, something can intercept and bring a change in you. Am I talking to somebody here? As am I talking to somebody here? At the middle of her life, the bitterness was eradicated and favor entered her life. How did I know? When there was a meeting in heaven, among all the virgins in the land of Israel, it was her that God chose. And the Bible said when the angel appeared to her, the angel did not just call her Mary. The angel first of all hailed her. She said, Hail Mary, full of grace. I want to hail you first before I talk to you. He said, Hail Mary, full of grace. The Lord is with you. So he said, I am not here because your name is Mary. I am here because you are full of grace. It is the fullness of your grace that attracted me. It's not about the name Mary, but about the fullness of your grace. He said, Hail Mary, full of grace. I came to prophesy to 49 of you under the sound of my voice. By the power in the name of Jesus, your grace shall be full from now. Shall be full from now. I say your grace shall be full from now. Lift your hand and shout a amen like thunder. Lift your hand and shout a amen like thunder. Take it out. this. The Bible said, I'm talking about fever. A little girl by name, her name was Esther. When they gave birth to Esther, the father died, the mother died. The only person she had as a confidant was a gate man, a poor wretched gate man. The man was from nowhere. And the Bible said one day, in the land of captivity, Vashti disobeyed the king. And when Vashti was removed, the king said, gather me virgins. And I can see Pin, uh, 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 Mr. Mordecai using his last savings because every beauty contest you buy the form. Am I communicating? He bought the form with all he has saved for the little girl Esther and said, I'm spending my last time because of you. Don't fail me. Now look at this. The Bible said everybody got down in the house. And when they gathered, as soon as Esther stepped in, scripture said, Esther found favor in the, in the sight of Haggai. Haggai was the commissioner for women affairs. Haggai was the one keeping the women inside the house. So the Bible said Haggai separated Esther and kept her in a place. And when Haggai separated her, Haggai gave her some mates to start working with her. Even as someone that came for beauty contest, she already had mates. Am I communicating here? Now listen to this. If favor wants to locate you, favor will simply go ahead of you and collect the man who is connected to your next level. Listen, no man is an island. God cannot come from heaven to bless you. If God wants to bless you, God will simply pass through a man. God is the source. Men are the channel. From point A to point B, you need a human agent to transport you. Am I talking to somebody here? As am I communicating here? The right people in your life shall appear in your life. Destiny helper shall look at you. Destiny helper shall look for you. Stand on your feet and shout a better amen. Listen, on the day of the contest, the Bible said, Esther required nothing apart from what her guy has told her to wear. Now, it takes a man who has been close to the king for years to know the kind of woman in the heart of the king. So every other girl that came, we are doing guest work. Oh my God, you didn't hear what I said. Every other girl, we are doing guest work. The Bible said, when the turn of Esther you know what it means? It means it was the turn of others first before it was the turn of Esther. It means others we are passing. Some of them we are cat walking. Some we are dog walking. Some we are doing different styles. But when the turn of Esther came, life is turned by turn. Oh my God, you didn't hear me. I said life is turned by turn. If the Lord has not visited you, it means your turn has not come. But today I came to announce to you, your own turn has appeared. I am my sheep and let her call. Garaka le katosha. I say your own turn has come. If the Lord has visited your neighbor, don't envy your neighbor. When God visits your neighbor, it means that God is in your neighborhood. Ah, am I communicating here? And when God visits your neighbor, it simply means.
means that God is in your neighborhood and the next door can be your door. The next office can be your office. The next business promises can be your own. If it is your turn, say it is my turn. Now watch this. The Bible said Esther was passing when they had all done came. Scripture says she was passing. Mama, Mama, look at me. Let <coughs> my Bible says she was passing in fear and trembling. Is it in your Bible? You know what it means? Hear me. When favor comes upon you, anything you do is a style. You know they hear me so. The Bible says she was passing in fear and trembling. Look at what it means. It means Esther was passing, her legs were shaking. She was biting her nails. She said, I am a nobody. I don't have money to pay bribe. Some, they have paid bribe for them. Some of the daughters, their fathers are commissioners. Oh God, what am I going to do? If I fail my uncle, I may go to the village. As she was passing in fear and trembling, the king saw her and said, I like this style. Yeah, 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 yeah. When favor comes upon a man, that man should be himself. Don't imitate anybody. If she wanted to catwalk, the king would have rejected her. But she was herself because she was a poor girl. Now listen to this. Why did the king reject Vashti? Vashti was disobedient. So the king saw a girl that was shaking and said, this one shaking like this. Anything I tell her she will do it, she will not disobey. So let me take her as a queen. And that was how she became the queen. Simply because she was herself. When favor comes upon you, do your thing, nothing may happen. Now watch this. Can I pray for somebody? Can I move? Can I pass? Mama, Mama, sorry. If you don't they do me somehow. Can I profess her? Okay, stand up. Stand up, sir. Come. Take it down. Do you know anywhere called Ogun State? Uh, are you from Ogun State? Eh? Come. Come, let me talk to you. Come fast, 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 fast. Hit my hands. Who brought this man, please? You brought him. Eh? You are the one that brought him. So you, you know him very well. Okay. Hold my hands. Tap, tap my hands two times. I said tap, tap. Two times. Tap again. Tap again. There's a land God said I should bring you out of. God said, I should tell you, say, that land, if you fight, it will take your head. It's been taking heads. That land has taken two heads. And I saw you dragging, dragging, dragging. Who is Mustafa? Your father is Mustafa. Who is Kayode? Are you Kayode? Now listen. The Lord said, I should tell you. He said, he said, step your leg out of that land. And allow God to fight. Because if you keep fighting, if you keep... Come. Come. Can I pray for you? Eh? Can I pray for you? Do it like this. Do it like this again. When last did you travel home? Hello? Can there be silence? Has it been long you traveled home? Yes. Very long. The reason is because you are afraid. Can I talk to you? Your family is strong. Eh? It's very strong. And as a man in your family who is bad, the man, whenever it is time to die, he will use the head of people to renew his head. And that man is so bad, he's so obvious. And last two weeks, when the man was in their witchcraft meeting, they were asking him, who are you bringing this time? He said, I'm bringing Uche. Hey! What's her name? Uche. Lift your hands. 
Can I prophesy? Touch that keyboard for me. Play and sing for me. I give you Jehovah. Give me the to the cherub. Jesus said, "Be a man, me oh, and be a man, shaka yo. I can be a man, I can be a man, me shaka yo. And you will be the Jehovah." Apostle chapter 12, verse 1. He said, Now Herod the king stretched forth his hand to vex certain of the church. Verse 2. He said, He took James, the brother of John, and killed him with the edge of the sword. Verse 3. When he saw that he pleased the Jews, he proceeded further to take Peter, intending to kill him after Passover. He said, And those days we are the days of the unleavened bread. And Peter was kept in prison of four quadrants of soldiers. But seven prayers we are made by the apostles on behalf of Peter. There are people you touch by mistake, you die by correction. Am I communicating here? There are people, he has touched other people and gone scot free. But as he is about to touch this one, untimely dare to visit him. Move your hands and stretch your hands, brother Shaw. Any man that wants to take his life, let him return back to him. Let me hear your voice and prayer. Rakatatata, rate, ratatata, ekorotosha, jibate, rekotokosha, matatatatata, yakotokotokotokotosha, ayamate kasu, roparate kasu, taharata, ramanamanamanamasha. Everybody in his family, only him is alive. Only him. Only him. Kill the brothers, kill the sisters. Only him is alive. And for five years he has refused to go home. And the man wants to take his life. Look at me very well. If I pray for you, stretch your hands. As I pray for one, I pray for all. God has given me two ministries, man. I function in the killing ministry a lot. Yes, God is a killer. You, 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 you don't know that God is a killer. Stretch your hands as I pray for him. I pray any evil person existing in your family. Seven days from this minute. I am a shibata. God is a killer. The Bible said the Lord kill it and make it alive. He's a killer. If you don't believe in the death of your enemy, don't pray with me. If you know your father is a wizard, don't pray because if you pray, your father will die. If your mother is a witch and you are aware, don't pray because if you say amen at the word of my prayer, your mother will die. Am I talking to somebody here? Stretch your hands, let me pray. We live in the world of wickedness, especially from this part of the country. People are wicked. We have digital demons here. They don't need to touch your pregnancy now to remove it. With their eyes, they can remove your pregnancy. You are far. They do you like this. Something enters you. Digitalized. Everything has gone digital. Even demonology is digitalized now. And there are people that want to stretch your hands. I want to pray. I want to pray. I want to pray. You believe in the death of your enemy. Stretch your hands. If you don't believe, maybe you don't stretch. Some people will say, Jesus said, pray for your enemies. There was no prayer point. Stretch your hands. I was preaching in Manhattan. I saw Nigerians who were there. They were struggling. I was talking with anger. And I was talking. I was 
day God will keep people in their family. The pastor came and touched my back. A white man, um, Archbishop John Stevenson, he touched me. He said, take it easy, sir. We don't kill people here. I looked at the man and said, you are saying this because the demons here and the demons in Nigeria are not the same. You don't understand. The demons in America eat Indomie. The demons in Nigeria eat Fufu. They are two different. They have two different missions. Am I communicating? Ma, in Genesis, the Bible said, now the serpent was more subtle. He was talking about demons in America. In Revelation, he said, now the dragon opened his mouth and fire came out. Demons in Nigeria. And stretch your hands. I want to pray. Can I pray for you now? I say, can I pray for you now? Any man who has vowed that you will not live to see your future established seven days from now, let the angel of death visit them. I say, let the angel of death visit them. Lift your hand and shout out, Amen, like a pendulum. to pray for people who their enemies are unknown stretch it you don't know them some of you are people you are you relate with some of you they are the ones you carry your news to they are the ones you tell what you want to do and yet you don't know and yet you don't know they are the people who are fighting you stretch your hands i want to pray for you i am a Stretch it, let me pray. When Jesus was going with Peter and the apostles, the Bible said on their way, a man came and wanted to arrest Jesus. Peter brought out his sword and cut off the ear of the man. Jesus took the ear, put it back. He looked at Peter. He didn't say, Peter, throw away your sword. He said, oh boy, put back your sword. There are many more ears to cut in the future. Put it back. There are, there are work to do tomorrow. Am I communicating here? The Bible said when they slap him on one side, on one cheek, he didn't say turn to the other cheek. He said turn to the other side. If you read the scriptures, he said when they slap you on one cheek, turn to the other side. God is a technocrat. God is a divine writer. The Bible says 2 Timothy 3.16, he said for all scriptures is inspired by God and profitable for teaching, for reproof and for correction and for training in righteousness that the man of God may be complete, equipped for every good work. If God wanted you to turn to the other cheek, God will say turn to the other cheek. He said turn to the other side. Every Christian has an other side. You don't know my other side. You see me as a, am I communicating here? When they want to take your life, you take their life before they take your life. Am I communicating here? The Bible said their wives shall become widows. He said their children shall become fatherless. Isaiah said, break their teeth in their mouth. Those that speak against me. He said they shall be drunk with their own blood as sweet wine. And they shall eat their own flesh. He that ticket a bit from me. The same shall fall inside. I stand on this altar and I prophesy upon your life. Any man who said over their dead body shall you live to enjoy your life. Seven days from today, let them die by fire. 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 Lift the hand and shout at him like a balloon. Lift your hands. Lift your two hands. All eyes closed. Now, as a woman here, the Lord said to me, He said, I want to restore your job, the job of your husband. I want to restore your husband. I want to restore your husband. Lift your hands. All eyes closed. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Kabu Barata. Mate Katakusia. Kibarata Ladahate. Then I want to restore the job of your husband. I don't know what I see, but I hear a name like Aya, Aya, Aya Nobi or something. I don't know if I pronounced it well. Something like that. Your husband was working, but right now, she's, he's out of job. The Lord said, I want to release his job back. If you're the person, just leave your seat and come fast and let me pray for you. You're a woman, leave your seat and come. And let me pray for you. Aya, Aya Nobi. 
you have three children. You have three children. First, let me pray. What's your name? Zebiji. How many children do you have? Three. Where are you from? Which state are you from? Where is which state are you from? You have three children. Your husband is out of job. Put your hands together here. Father, I speak and I decree. The Bible said it is not good for a man to be idle. Yes, they frustrated him out of his job. He trusted a friend and told a friend his plan. Eh? Look at me. He told a friend his plan of what he wants to do. 